I get a record now. So now always you wanted to set up your project, but before that, let me back up my stuff quick. I like to organize my file. So right now, let's see. I modeling entertain lecture. So now we have project one, but um, you don't have to do like mine as long as you set up the uh, uh, project. But this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna back up by duplicate my week one and rename to week two. Just in case I have a different file that I need to save on week two only. So I go to my file menu. I like you to get used to it um, when you work with a uh, Maya software. Try not to double click your scene on Window Explorer. Let's see, let's pretend. If you come to your folder, go to scene folder and double click on the file that you need to open. Now, you could do that if you wanted to do quick access or show somebody something. But if you want it to work and keep organized your file, it's important to use open up Maya first and choose file menu, set project, and then look for the project you wanted. If you don't have a project, just go to create. I'm going to set. If you don't have one, you create a new one using project window. Okay. So now after I set up the project, when I click open scene, Maya will know where to go and look for the files in that project. So I would like you to get used to it with this process. So I'm going to open up my O3 from last week. And I'm going to save this scene as name different right, by at number four. So this is how I like to do to organize my file. And I'm going to enable my reference layer. Now, on perspective view, I think I turn off image plane. If I turn it on, it will show up. I need to check my cap, see if it match with the reference. I think it's a little off there uh, on the reference. I can see the height right there. That's kind of not correct. So I'm going to fix it a little bit. Switch to 1. And you can right click on vertices if you need to. I'm going to select all of these vertices. Look at on perspective views so that I can check what I select. And I'm going to bring these a little higher right there. So turn on move to and I can move. Can you see? You can make some adjustment. I'm going to switch to three again so that I can see it. I think these probably close is not uh, close enough. Here we go. Okay. And now look like this. So now a little more thing that I need to edit on this section, but I'm gonna come back to this later because today we're gonna start it to work on the body. The body is a little more complex than the cap. Now the bottom of the body, that's the easy one. This, you can use same technique as what we did on the cap, but much easier because it's straight line. So now, I'm going to start it to set up. This is site view and font view here. So first, I'd like you to create a cylindrical because 
Is that what we see, the shape that looks alike? So now before we do this, let's take a look at on the cap. We might need to come back to the cap later because we wanted to create indents in here. Well, let's do it now. Sorry, keep changing my mind. Here we go. So now I'm going to select the whole ring. You can click, shift, double click the next ring will select the whole thing now there's another tool though can you see right here this tool this is called paint selection when you enable it you can see the brush when you move the brush you paint the selection on the surface now with the print brush you need to paint on the center of the face that's the selection point you can increase the brush size. If you double click on it, can you see you have radius U and L. What you need to increase is you need to increase, oh, sorry, the L is the lowest you can go. So let me reset the two. Now the radius U is the size of the brush. So right now it's one unit and let's see four units can you see it's larger now this is too tedious if you have to keep using this slide once again to access you double click on the paint brush print selection so i'm going to show you how to use shortcut for the brush and this shortcut is applied to every single brush in my system so once again the U, radius U, radius L is the smallest as possible. So right now it's point zero zero one unit. You can go down a little more to get even smaller point, smaller selection. Now, let's leave this on because I want you to see what change. If you hold B key with a left mouse button, you can slide left and right. If you can't slide it, release all the mouse. Hold B again until it changes. And then you press the left mouse button to change the radius. Can you see? Now the radius, you update it. Go to the left, is smaller. Go to the right, is larger. So now I can select like this. Boom. Done. So you're going to close it. When you finish, you just press Q to switch to selection tool. So now we're going to extrude in, just inward. And um, before we do that, let's increase the scale of it. Switch to scale two. And scale only Y plane this Y plane, the green color. So click on it. When you click and hold, can you see? The Y plane is basically disable Y axis and enable uniform scale only on X and Z. So you may need to switch to, four, uh, to one so that you can see actual geometry and then scale it, make it small. We're gonna indent this cap in a little bit So when you're ready, I'm going to leave this ring outside. And that's the reason why I want you to select first, because I want you to move them closer. Some of you may not have this if you did not follow exactly what I did on the original cap. In that case, just you might have to insert a loop too, because this is what I want you to do. I'm going to hold control key. I'm going to switch to selection tool so that I would move. Hold control key. One click to disable or to deselect. And then hold control key. Double click on the next one. We'll deselect the whole loop. Similar to add selection. Once again, let me undo. Hold control key, click to disable or to deselect, and then double click to deselect the whole loop of that selection. 
the next one. It's just like that. Okay. Now, you can turn on move to. I want you to try another technique to quick extrude. In this case, I just want to indent it in, inside. So I can hold shift key. When you hold shift key with move to, you move cursor only on Y axis because we want it to extrude up. Can you see the word extrude there? This is why in the past last week I keep mention when you try to use uh, when you try to select surface, vertex or edge, try to use selection tool because you might accidental uh, when you wanted to add selection you will have to hold shift right if you are on selection tool you will not do extrude or anything else but if you are on move to it will be extrude and then the problem is if you accidental move that will become extrude and then you will have extra surface in between another face if you don't move them and go forward to do other things so you can have more trouble or uh, more problem on your surface so right now we want it hold shift and then drag now can you see you insert basically you extrude and move the surface now it's done that's it for for this model go to object mode so and I can press 3 to see how it looked. Look okay. What about that? If you want a sharp angle, let's press 1 again. You need to insert another loop inside there. So if I hold shift, right mouse click, multi cut tool, hold control key, and then I insert 1 to stop continuity there. Press 3. It looks good enough. Somehow, though, if you wanted to insert another loop right here, it will not allow you to do it. Do you know why? Because it's triangle. Triangle will stop the loop. So if, if, you guys, you don't have to do it, okay? But if you wanted to do it, you can follow it. I'm going to use pen selection tool. Oop, going to have to be on face. Here we go. To de uh, you might have to deselect. Here we go. By switch to selection, deselect somewhere. And then use selection tool again. Select. Now, if you wanted to use pen selection tool to deselect, you hold Alt key. Oop. Oh, sorry, sorry. Hold control key. I got confused with another. Uh, command for ZBrush. Here we go. So to deselect, hold control and pan. To select, just don't hold anything, just pan. Okay. So now, if I want extra loop, I have to use extrude. Can you like the vertex of the center of the circle and extrude out? No. Oh, you can't? You, you can't, but it's Sometimes it doesn't connect your uh, edge, and it causes problem. So you use face instead, and extrude face. Now let me switch to selection tool. Oop. On extrude face, change the offset 0 0.01 to less 0 0.1. Here we go. Can you see 0.1 is still too little? I think. How about 0.2? Now you get a really nice and clean loop. There you go. When I press three, now you get really sharp now. Okay, let's press one one more time. I think we might need this section. Can you see it's like straight down, right? Right there. Oh no, no, it's good. I think I just need to add another loop right here. One more loop, press three. That's better, maybe. No, it's not sharp enough. I think because of this part, uh, routed. I could, let me, let me undo quick. I could move this ring 
Double click on loop. You can press three so that you can see it, how it looks. I want that to be a little sharper. Just a sharper. Oh, hey guys, no. I got confused with the picture. Actually, there's another extend surface there. Can you see? Because these are a kind of a quarter sphere and then has straight line there. In that case, let me press three again. I might have to do this, extrude these two down right there. Hold on, let me select the loop. Basically, we want th that edge to extend it. I'm going to hold shift and move. Can you see? Just like that. Just a little bit of it. Here we go. Press 3. Now I got it. And then I have to stop continuity by, let me move a little bit more. I want to exaggerate a little bit. Here we go. By add loop. One, two, here we go. And I could even make these a little more sharper on the bottom. Can you see? Okay. So how about the inside? Well, the inside, nobody see it. This is good enough. When I deselect, look like this. Let me turn this off quick. Can you see? So. And yes. When you extrude for the second time on the bottom, did you move it up further or did you just extrude it? Extrude and then move down. Yeah. So you just hold shift, you mean this one, right? Uh or no, inside. No, no. Inside, yeah. Um when you, you just use selection tool, hold shift and then just move. Oh okay. it will execute extrusion and then move it. Okay, on the second one when you did On the second one I select three three ring. Yeah. And then hold shift and then just move down. Okay. It's an extrude plus move. Okay. It's a shortcut. <clears throat> People who are online, are you guys doing okay? Are you guys follow along or just watch? Uh, um, I'm doing fine. Okay. Yeah. And um if you have a question later, just email me and then we can set up the time to meet too if, if we need to. At this point, you might need to look at on this side view, or font view or side view, and try to move to thin it out because it's become too thick. But when you do that, let's go to one. Using level one is a little better. And then can you see I select, look at how I select them. I region drag. You use region select like the marquee selection by click and hold and then drag all the way. Select it. Now, when I do this, I make sure that is select all side. That's the key. And then I'm going to move only one axis. I move it up. How about that? And then. I'm going to reselect again only this part on the bottom. I look at on the reference and then I just follow it. And now, so it's thinner. This might be too thick on the bottom. Let me go back to one again. So seems like on the bottom are too thick. Now what you can do on the bottom is this. You could actually, can you see I select like this, and you scale to, and just squish only on Y axis. I'm gonna move a little bit to make adjustment. Now when I press four, oh, press three, and then five, here we go. So it's a little thinner, looks about right. Okay, I'll give you a few more minutes
And now I think we are ready for the body part. Yeah. You, you might need to save again, control, uh, control S, and then delete history, Alt, Shift, D, shortcut, Alt, Shift, D. Right here, edit, delete by type, history. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, I have yeah. back here. So when you shift the glitch down there, make it go further down, it's a little like yeah. this. Yeah. Um, which one did you select? You, you look at on the flat area on the bottom and select okay. every single place that are flat. Okay, so it'd be both. You have two, so it's like two. Okay, and then you just, with your extrude? Oh, shift, okay. and then move. It's extrude. When you do a shift and move, it extrude and then execute it and then move it. But at once. Okay, cool. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody in here need help? <laughs> so how are you do how are you guys doing online people? How many of you are follow along? How many of you are just watch? I'm just watching. You're just watching, okay. All right. So, are we ready here? Now, we're gonna, let's create or name this. After you delete history, let's name hydrant cap or something like that. Hydrant cap mash. You can call mash or poly. Because in the future, when you do more complex scene, you might have hydrant cap mash, hydrant cap shader, AI standard shader, hydrant cap bitmap, something like that. So better to put the identification of what type of object or selection would be. So this time it's called mash or poly, something like that. Now, we're going to put a layer on this. I'm going to use the same name, cap. So I just copy hydrant cap. While you are selecting the surface, Maya allow you to use a layer command called create layer from selection. Now, if you use create layer from selection, is create a new layer and assign this into the layer. Can you delete the layer? Right click and choose delete layer. Okay, I want you to, I just want to show you the uh, option of layering. You can go to layer, create empty layer. So it means nothing will be inside, but you can add as many as object you want. You can remove or you can add. To add, you select the object, highlight the uh, layer one, right click and choose add selected object. To remove, you just select the object and remove selected object. Right now we're gonna add and then double click on layer one. I like you to rename. I'm gonna name hydrant cap underscore layer. And I'm gonna change the color of the layer. Any color you like, um, but avoid green because it look like selection. So I'm gonna try, how about a little cobalt blue Click Save. Now, when you deselect it, if you turn on wireframe on shade, you will see the color showing up. Color of your wireframe. Now, on the cap, we will come back and do the detail on the little hole later. Not today. Today, let's move on to the big body. So, now, you can template it. If you press one, uh, press one time on the third square in front of the layer color. These are T. T is indicate templating. So it means you cannot select and you can see only in wireframe mode. I am on smooth and shade all. So now if I 
cycle, one more click, I get R. R is referencing. So references allow you to see the surface, but won't allow you to select it. And this is good to organize things. So at this point, I'm going to turn on reference. Oh, one more. One more circle cycle is normal layer. So you say, oh, you enable the, the layer. So I'm going to switch to reference so that I can see the shade. If you switch to full wireframe mode, it will follow to wireframe mode. Switch back to five because we want to see it. So under polygon, uh, poly model tab, modeling tab, you have a preset right there. You can click on cylindrical. And on cylindrical, um, we're going to increase the size. So you could increase the height, radius. Here we go. I, um, Sorry, I forgot. Let me undo. I forgot to explain this. If you highlight the label of any attribute on the channel box, it allows you to activate the slide so that you don't have to type. You can go to your scene. Let's say if I maximize this scene and I hold middle mouse button down, you must highlight the attribute you are able to slide to changing the look or the property of the highlight selection. Can you see? I'm going to turn on move and then move it up a little bit. And can you see I move only one straight line? Now, this is why we wanted to build object from the world space. Everything line up to the center of the world space. When you look at on the grid, can you see? It line up right there. So it make things a lot easier and easy to organize your model. Now when you're done though, you can group the whole model and move anywhere you want. But while you're modeling, you wanted to do this in the, in the middle of the world space. So I'm going to increase the height. There we go. You might need to make some adjustment. Now, when you m increase the height, you might need to switch to four. I want to see it. Turn on move to move it down. I just want you to build only this at, at this point. I mean, you're going to connect them, but not, not today. Because so that we leave this out and then we figure it out again because they, are, they will have a different. Uh, topology. Okay. So now I'm going to make sure that they about there. Can you see right here? Let me highlight the subdivision height. Um, I could go with 14 exact. Oh, hey guys. No, it's up to you. Um, just make sure they kind of match. My 14 is not matched. Your might be different too. Mine is like 14.2 is about right. It's not even punited, not punited, like it didn't even go through into there neither. So I'm going to leave that space a little bit. So this is good. Okay. So now what numbers of the vertical topology we should go. 20 might be a lot. Now the key is you need to think about how you're going to connect this small part and the font part slender. So we're going to leave this primitive and we come back and calculate it. Okay. So I want you to create another, another slender. That's the reason why I, I don't want you to duplicate this slender. So when I create a new slender, I'm going to move it in spot again. And I'm going to work on the side one first. So turn on rotate to E shortcut. 
And I'm going to start it to rotate it on Z axis, the blue ring. Let me deselect. Can you see the blue? Now, if you forget on the principal classes, the uh, axis in Maya or almost every single 3D software has color coded. When you look at on perspective view, I'm going to maximize. I'm going to switch to selection too quick. And let me click on this. Now, can you see green color is Y axis. Z is X. Oh, no, Z is blue. Red is X. So once again, if the arrow of the direction pointing is mean positive volume, the other side will be negative. Same thing as green plane and Z plane blue color. So correspond to this. So, so uh, Z is the front direction. Negative Z is the back side will be the back direction. Same as the po uh, positive Y will be top. Negative Y will be bottom. And so on. Okay, so I'm going to switch to rotate too. Now I can see that Z rotate will be the orientation that I need to change in order to line up horizontal like this. I'm going to start it to rotate right away and then I'm going to change the rotate Z on attribute to 90. Turn on move to, and you can either start it from the right side or the left side. I'm going to start it to the right side because I want to keep synchronize the positive volumes. And I'm going to try to center the object to the center line here. This is really convenient with the blueprint because we don't have to try to figure it out where's the center and so on. And you don't have to build both sides. You can build one side and mirror it. So let's do that. So we're going to do only one side. Now, the reason that I want you to use a fresh new primitive because we want this input. So I'm going to highlight radius, middle mouse button, and then slide it. I want it to get this width. That's it. There we go. OK. We're going to just stick it like that. Now height, I think we need a little more. How about three? I want it to penetrate the slender like this. Okay, just penetrate. And you don't have to, we're gonna start it just really small like this, really short. Okay, so I'm gonna let it penetrate a little bit for now. Okay. Turn off subdivision cap to zero. Okay. Now, when we see this, can you see? We are lucky we have one match there. Because we're going to connect them later. So at least we have to have a match. So right now, let's start it from the main object. The main body. 20 would be too many segments to work with. Because think about this. Those sections need to be connected to all of these segments later on. So I'm going to start it in the volumes that reasonable. If you remember, this has 8 span, right? So total of 6 span. That might be too much. Let's try 8. Here we go. Now, it, I could see, is really good number. It's absolutely too less. 
So let's double it, 16. Here we go. So just remember the 16 number at this time. Now you might think of, hey, can I try 12 though? We can, let's try. This is 12, and it may look facet, but if you press three, it looks round. However, 12 would be press it one back. I think 12 is too less. 16 is about right. The other thing you need to consider is you go to font view. You want the center line there. Why? Because later on we're going to delete this. When we finish on one side, we mirror it. So we don't have to do twice. Okay. So that's why we want a center line really on the center because sometimes my chef, you don't want that. So 16. How about this guy though, the small one? Let's start with 16 also. Here we go. Now 16, I could see that, wait a minute, this one can be connect, but here, I have to connect two, three, that's not working. So let's do 12. 12 is about good, I think. Not too less and not too much. When you press three, it will be rounded. So press one, so don't worry about that. And now, what about this one? We need subdivision height. We have the subdivision of, we already have axis. Now subdivision height, how many we want? Well, we have to try to match them. So here we go. One match there. This is another match. This is extra. This is good, so my seven. Okay, we can remove individual later, but right now it's about seven. Let's try six. If I do six, it's spread too much. Can you see? We can still move the line though if we need to, but I think we go with seven. Here we go. And at this point, I will probably have to move this line to match, rearrange them, but the problem with moving this section right away is we become less uniform. But what we can do, we can do like this. Turn on move to, and I just going to move that down, the body down. Because this section, we obviously can extend it. Same here, we can shrink it if we need to. So I'm gonna move it like this. Try to match, can you see? You might need to zoom in. If you active the tripod on Y axis, you can use middle mouse and slide. Middle mouse is really useful, middle mouse button. So I can slide. So now it's match. And at this point, what I can do is I can go to vertex. Oh wait, hold on. Can you look at on the bottom? Let's, we don't care about this section, the cap. So let's remove the cap to zero temporary. And you might have a question that, wait a minute, Sarit, I mentioned that you can do only three and four. Well, at the end, before we finish, we need to connect them. And then we can connect them as quad. So because it's 16, right, you will get quad. So in this case, we can leave it there because we are not done. We are in the progress and working. So I'm going to right click and choose vertices and select the first row, the top row. And I'm going to move a little bit because I want it to be kind of look like mimic that get inside there. Here we go. Same thing as the bottom. You're going to lift it up. Just only the row on the bottom. That's it, there we go. I don't want you to touch at least all of these roll because we want them to look uniform, we'll create a lot better in terms of transition of the surface. So it looked like this at the moment. Save your file and 
Now we're going to have to figure it out how to connect this. A little bit more work on these model because the point is we don't want to rearrange to, well, let's create another one just as a dummy for now, the, the font one, because when we build the site, we need to concern about the font part too. So the font part, create a new slender again, and before we do anything else, we already know that we don't want cap. So put cap zero. And we started axis, the subdivision axis to 16 to match with the big one. But most likely we will, we will reduce them. So go back to the new slender, move in spot, and rotate. My, I rotate on x axis because I want face forward. Switch to move to and move it out. Now, when you move this out, I'm going to look at on my side view. I like you to match the center. You might need to switch to four. Match the center at least. There we go. You might have to zoom in really close. Give me the mouse drag if you highlight the uh, yellow, uh, highlight the uh, Y axis. When you highlight it, the axis will turn yellow color. And you go to radius. Middle mouse drag, highlight, uh, highlight the label, and then middle mouse drag. I believe this, hold on, let me check. Okay, so bigger, here we go, like that. Look at on the font, it's a lot bigger. And then the height, you can do three and then move it in to intersect. Now it's intersect like this. This is a lot of work on this one. Oh, it's a little more complex on this one. Here we go. So, and can you see on the reference it's actually penetrated uh, to the small shape of the circle. Okay. So, we have to work with this. Okay. Now, what about the subdivision? 16 would be perfect already, can you see? I got one, two, match, three, match, almost. What if we do a little more? How about 18? Let's see if it, 18. No, can you see the center are not matched? What about 20? 20, perfect. So now, 20 would fit. Can you see? Make sure you turn on wireframe on shade, otherwise you can't do, figure it out, this technique. So 20 is fit, even better. So we're gonna leave it 20 at this point. Okay. So save your file. And we're going to delete this half, right? So we'll do that. Before we forget, why don't we do that? Right click and choose multi cut and just link this section. You click on existing edge and then drag until it stop. This way you are ensuring that it's really wielded on that corner. Now go down to the bottom. You might need to tumble your file or your scene. Click and then drag until it stop. Here we go. Press enter to execute. Here we go. So we are preparing. And actually, at first, I thought about doing only left first. Let's do all of them at once because it's, I think it's shorter time to try to figure it out this section. So now, delete this side. 
using phase, here we go. Can you switch to full wireframe? Can you see on the back side we didn't split, so select the whole surface on the back side, which is good. Hit delete, and I'm missing some here. You need to open it up. Inside cannot have a face. Same as this one. Let me go to five. Um, hey guys, you can isolate your selection under uh, show menu, isolate, select. So I select it and choose view selected only. Shortcut is control one. Now, you temporarily hide it, temporarily. If you want to bring it back, you can do Control-1 to bring it back because it's a shortcut of isolate, select, view selected only. Once again, Control-1, you can use menu until you remember the shortcut. So now, once again, Control-1 to isolate it. I want you to delete uh, only the inside. You don't need to delete the outside because we're going to use it for extrude, but the inside, hit it. Get rid of it. Okay. So now I'm going to do Control 1 to bring everything back. Here we go. So this guy will merge. This guy will have to cut, open up the section. We are not going to cut that yet. We're going to work on joining these two guys together first. Okay. To join it, it's not that difficult at all. First, let's hide this cylinder. Not hide, template it so that we won't touch it by accident. So select the body, the cylinder, cylindrical body and go to layers, create layer from selected, and then template. Now you can see wireframe, can you see I template it? So once again, let me undo. You select the object, go to layer, create layer from selected, and then activate template. Let's rename, we're gonna call working layer, or how about template layer? Something. Don't leave layer one, layer two, because you're gonna get confused, like what la this layer for? And here we go. So template it. And focus on this line. Can you see? Now I want you to move, just prepare it. You can move vertices, but if you move vertices, I have to move two of them at once. So if I want to move two vertices, I select A. Turn on move two. And when you move it, I want you to constrain only Z direction. And basically you prepare, you want this corner to kind of match. It might be hard to see. You might have to switch to a uh, referencing. And then move, can you see? Here we go. Just let it match. On this section, I probably has to select vertices now. Press five again and move. Move in one line. And here we go. So we are preparing. And just keep going, press four to switch, select one vertices, one vertex, or two vertex, it depends. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna press five again, shortcut, and move, zoom in. You can press F to frame selection, because we select the vertices, it will allow you to see. Can you see? Here we go. I just wanted to touch the surface. I'm in, I am preparing, select, press five, move. The crucial on this is when you move, make sure you move one axis only so that you won't shift the shape. I don't want you to shift the shape at all. 
So be careful about that. Now, what about the bottom? Actually, we can do the bottom by mirroring it also. So let's focus on top first. Sorry, I, I shouldn't keep changing. And then switch to full. I'm going to grab this one and the center. We need the center to go together. So I'm going to move until it's overlapping. Here we go, right there. This might overlap too much. Can you see that might be too much? Because I don't want it to cut right on it. I want it to maintain the cylinder, the main body cylindrical shape. So it shouldn't be penetrated. I think it should follow it right there. No, no, a little more. Well, just right there. Now, I'm going to make this adjustment on the, on the side. I think the side need to go a little bigger, just a bit bigger. Even though, oh, I was already wrong on that. It's supposed to be bigger. Can you see? So turn on scale and then scale. Scale only Z and X by grabbing the green plane. Scale it up. Here we go. Let's see if it put almost touch. I'm going to just make it touch. Here we go. I want these intersect to match right there. I want it to be right there. Right now, if you can't get exact, if you want it right here, can you see the number? You can highlight both by clicking to highlight the numeric field. And then you can do, how about, has to be bigger, right? 1.154. Oh, 1.155. How about 1.15, oh, 1.16. 1.16. Here we go. Can you see? This is look good. Overlap. And this is a little off. Hmm, I don't like that. See that? A little off. That one is good looking, but it's okay. Just a little bit of it. So, and don't worry about this part because we're going to cut. Now, I want you to do this. Oop. Cut half, multi-cut, link cut from here to there. Okay. And this one also... We're going to cut from here to there. So multi-cut. And when you do it here, it's going to be hard to tell which one is the center, right? Can you hold shift key? Can you see when you hold shift key, when you move cursor, it's ident identify 50% between top and bottom right away. And if you click with middle mouse, oh, no, just one click. It's 50%. Press enter. Here we go. So let me undo. So you select, hold shift, and move cursor a little bit. It will show the preview of the mid of the center. And then you can just click it outside, we'll connect it. Did you already do that with the smaller the side one? Yes. Okay. Exactly same technique. And you can go ahead, delete the bottom half. Make sure you're on face mode. You can select both, right click and choose face and hit delete. Oh, missing one, here we go. So it look like this. So that we work less. Save this. Okay guys, I'm gonna show you what exactly we are going to do. You don't need to do anything, just watch so that you get an, an idea. Save. Let me create a new scene quick. I'm going to show the concept of it. So basically, this 
if I have, I'm going to just duplicate it. Okay. And so basically, we wanted to connect two objects together. So these are two objects, right? It's open face. So if you remember, if we combine these two, they become two elements, but a single object. So I'm on object mode, and I select them. So now, to connect them, there's a few ways. You can connect by using a pen to polygon tool. So mash to a pen. So you click one edge and go to the other edge, right? Now, I'm going to undo. You can also do this. You can select equal edge, has to be equal number, and then you choose bridge. So bridge, here we go. Now bridge allow you to do multiple. I can double click, shift, double click. Make sure you select the starting point in the same similar location or otherwise it will be twist. And then I can bridge. Here we go. So that's connect. Now what if I don't want it to extend them to bridge, but I want it to move this object really close to it and then connect them. So I'm going to make it really close. Let me zoom in. So I'm going to enable only the uh, Z axis. Zoom in really close, middle mouse drag, and overlap it. Here we go. So now, I want this to become a single element. If I go to face and double click, there are multiple elements in here. So this is why we want to turn on a poly calc. Under display, heads up display, poly calc. Because of this, right click and choose vertex. We can fuse the vertex or edge together. In this case, I'm going to switch to four. I wanted to fuse the corner together. When you select it, if you one click, you select only one whatever the uh, vertex on top or present it on the highest uh, selection. It will let you select it like that. So I want you to do this. Reach and drag. Oh, sorry, you don't need to do it. And then when I do that, it select all of a uh, component that within that region select. So if I do it more, it will select all like this. So now, these are really uniform because it's a line up stress. So I can select all multiple at once. It said eight vertices. If I hold shift right mouse click, I choose merge vertices, merge vertices, open up option. Here we go. Right now it said threshold point zero one, and these are helping not all the time, but most of the time, always merge for, uh, for two vertices. If it more than two will not merge. Now there will be a time you want every single vertices on that point merge. So in that case, you will have to uncheck this. Right now when I check this, it's allow me to do that. Maya will look at only a pair on each selection that within this threshold will be merged. So right now they are eight pairs, so it means eight pairs are not within this will be not merged. Does it make sense? So when I click apply, can you see from eight become four? So it means it merged only vertices that within this volumes. So now it's merged. So when I go to face, double click will select the whole element. So they become one now. So now, let me modify this quick and then I will show it to you. Uh, oh. Go to object mode, five, right click, 
multi-cut, if I cut like this, and that. And then I move only this point. It will look good, but I just want to show you. So now what if, let, let me do even more. Here we go. How about, this is exactly what we're going to do on that model. Here we go. So what if this section, I want the bottom to be the same. Well, we don't have to do it twice. What we can do, we can delete this phase, right? And then we go back to that. We're going to mirror them. To mirror it, let me activate. We look at on the axis we want to mirror. Right now, it's on Y positive. So it means when we want to mirror, we will, we will mirror on negative Y. To do mirroring, you go to shift right mouse click and choose mirror. Make sure you're on object mode. When I open up option, I will get mirror axis position, either use world space or use object space or bounding box. At this point, object space would be the best choice because based on the object space, now if I double click on my object and I uh, double click on the move to exit orientation of the object set to world at this point, let me switch, switch to object mode. See, now if I rotate this and I go back to selection, can you see? The object orientation is set to object, so it's matched with the object unless you face transform. So, so it means when we use object mode, it will use the object orientation to mirror. So now I'm gonna choose Y and these objects sit on positive, so I have to use negative. Object merge border vertex together. All of these vertex will be merged uh, automatically. When I click apply, here we go. I got two sides. Now what we're going to do with that model. So I'm not going to save this. I'm going to switch to hide in number four. Okay. This is why we prepare this. So at this moment, we're going to work only connect these two for now. And then we mirror it. And then we mirror it later because we're going to connect on the top. So at this point, select both. Okay, and we're going to combine them. Let me take a look at it again. I am trying to think. These are not masked, and we don't want to change the direction of them neither. Got to be careful about that. So it means when we move, we do not move this outline. Do not reform a uh, default. Uh, deform this outline. What I mean is do not deform this section like this. Do not do that. We do only on the, ins uh, on the other side. Here we go. So just remember, do not deform this plane. Whatever you do, do not deform these two plane. Inside is fine, but not this fine. So let's Combine this, go to object, combine, just only two, and template that. Oh, no, reference it because we still need to see surface. Now, when I switch to four, I will have to move this somewhere that can meet right there. There we go. Switch to five. Can you see? I want it to meet right there meet the intersection. So now this one need to get in. Need to intersect the surface. The point has to intersect on the surface outside. Same thing as here. Now this one, you could hold V key. V key is snap to point. And then you just grab only uh, this is x exit or uh, z exit. Can you see it's gonna snap? Now, 
if it keeps snapping on this guy and the cap, you need to turn off the cap. It just keeps snapping. Here we go. Can you see it? Now I got exactly. And then you can bring the everything back. I'm not going to bring the cap for now. Here we go. What are you snapping on? Uh, vertex. Yeah, what vertex is? There's only one vertex to slide to. Hold on. This guy. This oh. vertex. Yep. Make sure you move the vertex first, this vertex. Move it until it hit to the surface. I didn't do it even good that. Here we go. So. I mean, the key is uh, do not touch this plane. Can you guys look at it again? This plane and that plane. Do not touch it. So it means you cannot move the corner that belongs to that plane at all because it's going to reshape it. So now you can move. I mean, if you don't do snap, just eyeballing it, basically. But the reason that I do snap, because it's exactly right there, meet at together. Okay. Now, when you're done, you're going to merge this, basically. You're going to merge these vertices. So shift right mouse click, merge vertices, and choose merge. You could just merge without changing any volumes, or you can just leave it on open like this and click apply. Can you see it's become one? Let me undo quick. So you need to region select all of them on that corner, just on that corner. I should use selection two now, like this, and then read. It said two, so now when you merge, it should be one. If it's not one, it means it's uh, the distance is greater than this volume. You can increase the volumes to like 0 0.1 or something like that, or 0 0.08, 0 0.05. How did you uh, merge vertices and then? Yep, and just merge. You can open up option. To open up option, basically just choose uh, merge vertices and the square box. Okay, do we need to change anything in this box? No, just go ahead and merge. Unless it's not merging, and then you change the volumes. Okay. So switch to five. Now continue to do, select the inside, try to move it out. There we go. And now I could see that when I move like this, let me, uh, where's my, why it's not showing. Did I delete them? Hold on, guys. I, you didn't do. Uh, we didn't do anything wrong. I probably delete my cylinder. Let me undo my big cylinder. It's gone. No, I don't want to recreate it again. Ah. Oh. Okay, I deleted by accident. It happened. Okay, let me turn off cap. Let me template that for now. Here we go. Oh, no. Reference. I'm going to just hide it. Okay. I'm going to have to do it one more time. You probably don't. Just only me. I make a mistake. And merge vertex. I'm going to leave this window on. When I click apply, it will stay on. So now, this one will go like that. Now, in this case, you need to figure it out whether you're going to move the big one or you're going to move the small one. I think the big one will have less distortion share. So I'm going to move the big one. You could hold V key. Let's press full. Here we go. And then just snap, merge it, click apply. So now set one. Here we go. Now. This is the one that we need to really concern, that part. Okay. So basically, are you guys doing okay? We're going to have to move this in a little bit more. So I want it to meet only on that line. Can you see? Now, we need to move this way just a bit just to do there. Don't do too much. Here we go. Can you see? 
it still try to maintain that section. So basically, if I undo, it look like this. So you move to the side, and then you move backward until just focus on the uh, reference template of the body. You want that to touch that line. Like that. The reason is we wanted to wrap around that section, basically. We just wanted to wrap. So now, switch to four so that you can select the small, the side one, and then just move it to match. So here we go. Now, when you move it to match, this is the match. Can you see it spread? Actually, in this case, we want it to split like that. There's a reason, because otherwise, this will look a little awkward when we started to modify them. So we're going to get that space. We want that space for now, for now. Okay. Let me check on the side view. This is good. So I have a little gap. It's OK. Because if we connect it, I did it before when we connect it, it's too much, um, what do you call, crease on that area. So we need to have some space. And this time, how can we extend the surface? Do you guys, can you guys think of it? I want to feel that space, space, space. Say it again. Bridge, anybody? Now, bridge may not work because it's triangle. So let's, to be safe, go to object mode. Let's use a pen. Because a pen, you can, you can a pen three or four, or even more than five, or more than four. Are so your, are your lined up behind that nope. One? No. It just touch that surface, this one. That one it just touch the surface of the main body. Okay. And the side has to touch, too. Can you look at on my side? It looked like this. It's touched right there. So it have a little gap. Okay. So now you click one edge, and then just go to the opposite edge, because it's only three of them, and press Enter. So now you, you create a division like this. Can you see? Triangle. We are preparing. And we're going to have to fix the triangle. Really easy to do that. Let's go to five again, or uh, four. I want you to select this side. There we go. Vertices. And then just move it until it show up on the side of the main body, like that. Same thing as the other. This time, you have to do manually on each one because on the back side are not the same as on the front side. So you might want to select all vertices or edge. Move it first. And move only x axis on the side. Here we go. I hate to ask him a question. Yes. But the, uh, <laughs> when you appended the two vertices that were like touching the, the main, yeah, that is right there, did you go to a or append polygon? No, no. Uh, you do mesh to a pen to polygon, yeah. and then you s click on the edge. First edge, second edge. Okay. Yeah. Try it. See if it works. I can, I can do it with you. Can you see? I think I did it. Okay, so good. I already deleted, so let me do it. So just like this. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. okay. So now, align on the back side. Make sure it touch. There we go. So, and hey guys, on, on the back side, you don't want to move b forward and backward, just only side. Even though it's overlap like this, it's okay because we can have to re uh, realignment on the uh, topology on the body, basically. Otherwise, it's gonna change. It will not create a round circle for us. So we have to do that manually. Okay. So now let's come back to this area. 
we need to use multi-cut to, to split this. Multi-cut, I'm gonna switch to four a little bit. So start it from here, and then you kind of eyeballing it. You can do shift key to snap, but this time would work. Eyeballing, eyeballing, doing, uh, eyeballing, eyeballing, sorry, uh, the space to look kind of equal look. Can you see? Just like that. There's a reason because we want to remove these edges so that it becomes a full corner. So shift right mouse click and delete edge in vertex. Here we go. So now you got full. And later on we can loop this way but we don't have to do it now. This is good. And we're going to connect to the body because we prepare this. And I am not doing on the bottom because I can mirror them. So save your file. I'm gonna close. How you guys? Uh, how are you guys doing on the online people? I know it might be complicated. You might um, if you kind of lost. Actually, you can let me know and I can wait. So yeah, if you just watch, it's gonna be. I, I gonna when we finish just only this part I gonna stop and then we come back on Wednesday to do more. So I, I wanted to finish connect this and then mirror to the bottom part all the detail we work it later. Okay. So save and I gonna save scene as just in case something wrong with this version I can go back. Yes. Um, you, hold on, to get rid of the triangle, let me undo, here we go, yeah. you select the triangle, here we go, and then you hold shift, right mouse click, and choose delete edge. Okay, but before that you did the multi-cut to make the... Yes, yes, that's right, okay, you use you, multi-cut, yes. You hold down control to get like a... No, 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 you can't do this time because it's uh, more than full, uh, less than full corner, okay. so you eyeballing it, like... Pick one here, and then it's about equal oh, okay. space, okay. and that's it. Just okay. eyeball. Right. That's fine. Make sure you click on the existing edge first, and then slide it. Okay. Otherwise, you might uh, make a mistake. Select not right on the edge. You can have floating vertices. So I'll wait a little bit. And uh, if you're already done, delete history. Can you see the history is started to stack up? This could crash your system. Edit, delete by type, history. Shortcut is Alt, Shift, D. Save scene as. Now, this is how I like it. When you save, you can save any name, any number you like. I'm going to kind of, I save, uh, let's say if today I do 04, will be 04A, B, C, and then the next day will be 05. So, but it's totally up to you. I'm gonna do 0A, I have 04 and 04A. Just in case something wrong, I can go back to that, uh, the previous one. Don't have to redo everything again. So, yes. Mm -hmm. That one, oh, you need to use extension polygon. Make sure you do more. So go to mash two, yep, and, and that's it. And click on one edge and click the uh, other one. Are you doing it? Yeah. And then split it. Two more minutes. Did I record it? Okay, good. <laughs> Hey guys, you might have to remind me about recording. Sometimes I forgot. It might take two hours and, oops, I did not record it, sorry. It happened before. So later on though, when we done combine the body, we need to split the inside all the way here and this side too, to, to create a uh, blending uh, stop continuity. So when you're ready, you just enable the uh, enable the 
normal option on the template layers. We're going to prepare this guy. Delete half. You can delete cap because you're going to have to go. And halfway, you can do like this. Here we go. So basically, I delete the half side. And when it now is two element, I can double click and hit delete. Now, this one has to go. So we will have, let's delete this part later. Okay. Let's deal with this section. Oh, 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 hold on. What did I do? I forgot. Oh, boy. Look at, how did I forget that? The center of this object are not. Man. Now, this is going to be a big trouble, guys. Oh, God. Hold on. How did I miss this part? That's my mistake. And we can't shrink this. If we shrink this, this is not going to be a circle. It's going to be ellipse. How did I miss this? What did I focus on? Yeah. Well, hey guys, how many of you had the problem like mine? I hope not. <laughs> because basically, I probably have to start from here. So hold on, guys. Let's take a break. Let me pause the video. So I'm trying to fix it. What I make a mistake, just because it's not on the center. Oh, oh. Okay. do it too quick.
3D model design, 3D fundamental, oh, really? two classes. Is that like junior year or senior year? Um, 25, uh, 20, 20, gosh, 2750 or 2570, I don't remember. That's a, um, um, the uh, 3D foundation, fun fundamental in um, 3D model design is 3110. Oh, okay. yeah. So would those be along the track? Um, now we modify them to allow a um, student from game concentration. It's mainly for uh, visualization, but game can take it. I'm teaching those two classes. Oh, really? Yep. So, uh, you will get to do 3D print. As long as, long as I can like, get a little bit of, I mean, it doesn't have to be ZBrush, but a little bit of the more organic modeling in there yep. before yep. graduation. And I, I think there's a class, do they, not, do they teach a ZBrush class during the summer? Summer, yes. Uh, Marty Henley teaching a crucial design. Mm. So that's another fun class. All right, I'm done. Okay. So let's continue for everybody's sake. <laughs> and uh, Alt Shift D. Okay. So now I'm going to start it to get rid of the area that I don't want. And um, we will have to delete. Let's delete some of this because it has to go. Oh, oh no. That one cannot be deleted yet. This row can be, here we go, because we have to rearrange the object. Now, this might be better if we cut them to produce the line that will allow us to
to connect. So basically, can you watch me quick? I wanted to do it like this. So I'm going to have to one, two, three, four. Basically, I kind of try to lay out the, um, the way to cut it. Now, some people might use Boolean technique. So Boolean first and then clean all the line manually. That would work too. But for me, this is like I plan it. This has got to be this way, no other way. So now, when, let me go to and control one, see? now. These need to be clean, but at this point, I can get rid of all the phases here. Boom. So now I can merge all the vertices and then fix the layout. Okay? So now let's do it together. Let me undo. There you go. So. Okay, this is what you did. You cut the surface so that it looks like this. And now, switch to five so that we don't accidental cut on the way that are not looking match with the, uh, they are not lined up on the intersect surface. And then use multi-cut tool, cut it, I think I really have to come from here too. There, cut it. And now, Maya will let you cut that are not connect the edges. So at this point, we want it. At this point, we want it. So click and take your time. You might need to make some adjustment by middle mouse drag again on the, uh, the, the, uh, the current vertices so you can move doesn't have to be perfect now this area you can jump it by going right here it will cut it for you anything that come across so, so do you want it to get as close as possible yes as much as possible so that they won't shift the shape too much it will at some point but we want it to optimize it so here we go. And now, hey guys, on this section though, can you see right here on the top? You don't need to cut to here. You can just go ahead. Uh, make that shape change a little bit. It's fine. There we go. Now, this one, just stop on the corner. It's just like you try it. If it doesn't look good, recut it again. Okay. And then when you're done, just press enter and finish or change the tool. So I'm going to press one. Oops, sorry. No. I have to be on object mode. Switch to four. Here we go. Can you see the line like this? Some one. I got perfectly lined up, only one line. Can you see that one? The rest of them are not lined up perfectly, but close enough. So it looked like this. I mean, if you're done, you can go ahead and delete those phases, the inside phases. Like, I'll do it. Just the face inside. Here we go. So now can you see it can be connect them together. Here we go. This one, I did not finish moving these. So let me move. Here we go.
two minutes. If you're done, you can delete history, Alt Shift D shortcut, just to clean it first, so that when we merge them together, it won't crash. Save. You might need to save scene as again, just in case, because if we cut and delete it and it's not what we want, we at least can go back to A. Right now I'm on 4B. Okay. Almost done. For today. Almost. Yes. So I've been looking at when you apply to science and all that, but are these like documented means tests? Like teaching? Yes, you are. I don't think that's that much of a question. Well, delete history. At this point, I don't think it's going to cause anything. It must be from some other object. It says set, so it could be image set or vertices set, something like that. So, okay, let's finish this. So now, after you've done that, okay, so you're going to combine this and start it to merge vertices. Before we do merge vertices, we have to look at on this area quick. Now, oh, I forgot, I'm using one piece to delete, hold on, face, right there, okay. So, now, we need to get them to look like full corner. At this point, I don't want you to shift changing the layout of the body. Make sure they contain a half circle. Now, how to do that though? We need to add extra loop to prevent that for now, right here. Just extra loop, one loop. We want it to maintain those parts, okay? And this section, don't worry, we're gonna fix that, okay? We're gonna fix that. So. Right now, after you do that, we're gonna have to make these, yep. Um, whenever I do the... Uh, Insert loop. Yeah, it's not going across the whole space. So it's mean there's, yeah, there's one part that you have more than full corner. So let me undo, check on it. On this part, see, right now I'm on four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, so. We can fix that. Yeah, how do you fix it? Which part? 
Oh, so delete that one first. Oh, you can use multi-cut and cut manually. But let's delete that. Yeah, okay. just hit delete. Yeah, yeah. and then now uh, on this one too. That one too, yeah. So that one you have to delete. No, don't worry about that. Insert loop first. Oh, oh, it's already. Hey guys, um, that's okay. So some people have a trouble. So let's fix this first. Let's make it full corner first. So right now, what I need to do is let's combine this. Just for now, let's combine it. So combine. Okay. And after you combine, start it to merge vertices. This is what I want you to, um, because we can shift the whole top part down, up and down like this to make it closer, and then we can extrude it. So you should be okay. So at this point, let's focus on connect them. So select these two points need to be connect. So now, when I look at it, they are not exactly lined up perfectly. Let me press air. Here we go. Can you see? So I will need to maintain the main body cylinder. So I have to move only the front part. Here we go. Here we go. And I'm going to use that to snap to the main body. Can you see? Just snap and merge on the corner of the edge first. Merge. Open up, merge. I'm going to reset. Apply. So now become one. Now this section, we have the same problem. It's a little off. So once again, I will not move the main body, but I will move the circular, uh, the front one. So I'm going to hold V key and then let it snap. Here we go. Snap like this. Because the front one and the side one, even if this section are shift and create a little distorted, but we have this plan to fix it because we can move these plane close and extrude them, they will still get a circle. So now merge again. Okay. So we have to merge that? So yep. I have to move it to the right? No, you move this section. Let me undo quick. Can you see I move the uh, front section to match with the body. The body shouldn't be moved at all. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I move that part to the right. Here we go. Okay. I just hold V and snap to vertices. Yes, if you have extra, just get rid of it. Just do it only one. Because if you have extra, it's going to be more, uh, it will not be clean at all. You need to try to maintain the vertical as a, uh, we do 16, right? So eight, total of eight. That vertical needs, has to stay on eight. Can you guys look at my screen quick? What about this section? I have to move the front section vertices to match. So I'm going to hold V and then just snap like that. There we go. It shifts the shape a little bit, but it won't be too bad. This one? This one, we're going to have to split this section okay. yeah, because we don't want to shift this too much. This one is acceptable because just a smaller, uh, smaller shift. So I'm going to merge that. Now, this line, though, there are two lines. We could 
insert one. Oh, no, no. Let me think quick. We could do like this. Multi-cut. Oh. Hold on. Hey, guys, let's come back to this because it's kind of, they have to be connected together. So if I keep go jumping, it's going to create some confusion. So right now, this one can be merged. Can you see? That one. Merge. So now I got five corner. No problem because we're going to split. Now the five corner here, let's merge this one first. Merge this. So this section, merge. So now this doesn't have any, oh, oh, it does have something. So merge. Here we go. So five corner. We're going to come back on that. Okay. So now let's figure it out this section. Once again, this section, I could do a little layout, multi-cut to and cut like this, because I want this line to meet like here, right? And then, now, if I keep do manually, it will not be straight line. It will not. So this is what I need to do. Hold control and just let it loop. Let me check on the back side, do do on the, on the side view so I can see it. Can you see? I can kind of eyeballing it right there, one loop. And this one, gonna be another extra loop there. Here we go. So the reason is because I want to connect this to there. See? And then, I can come back and match that to here. Turn on move to, hey. I am on, not vertex, here we go. See, and then I want it to move to match right there. Here, match, and one there. So now, can you see right there? And then I merge. Here we go. So these, I will definitely delete them right there. Now, before I delete, though, I need to cut straight first. Because if I delete it, this shape will change, and I will get confused. So I will cut one, two. The reason is because I wanted to cut this to here. See, like that. And then now I can delete it. Delete edge, here we go. And let me look at four. Can you see it look like this at the moment? And I'm gonna merge vertices here. Here we go. And now I need to change this direction. It's really easy. If you remember, we split this to four kind of similar. So if I split two, multi-cut, I cut, cut there. And then I get rid of this. Delete edges. Here we go. And then I'm going to have to re-merge a little bit on this part. Merge. Merge. Now can you see I got four. And then I can connect this all the way coming to here. So now this section, I still get full, but I shouldn't leave that section like that because it doesn't look good. So now you need to start it to connect this. And I'm going to leave this like this because later on, I can connect that to big one here. See? And then go all the way. Here we go. And um, I think this section doesn't look good right there. I might, let's see which part should I, because right now if I do this, I got four corner. See, one, two, three, four. So I think we can move this down a little bit. There we go. So basically you just kind of think about the flow of geometry, yes.
Which part? The this part? Uh, no, the other one. This one? Yeah, that one. We okay. Can you cut it in half or something? Yeah, basically when you cut, you look at on the cutting line that the position will match with this side, okay. with this line. Same thing as the top. And the, thing, uh, the line that are not matched, you get rid of them later. So, so that you can connect them like this. Can you see? That's the line. So if I undo it, can you see? I connect that, right? This one, you remember? Let me undo it again. No. Here we go. How many subdivisions do you so have? you have to match this, one and two. That's it. Think about matching. So now to match, you could do multi-cut by cutting manually. Yeah, but it's, it's not going to be straight. Right. So we can do like this. Start it first. Let's do this one. This one is easier. Now, how do I make decision? You go to the view that allow you to see it. So I go to the site view, and I just do like this just to get started so that you can link them. Can you see? Right, so you add two of them. Yep, and then this one, and then you have to remove the extra. Because what I'm looking at it, I want it to connect to the corner. That's all I need. Connect to the corner because this one doesn't, right? So, like this one, I'm gonna... Once you do the control on the side view, it doesn't go away. So then do you click again or do you hit enter? Yes, you do manually. You press enter to finish first. So you do two-step cutting. Which one do you connect to? I'm sorry, I know, I know, I can't. The, on the top there, when you connect it. Let me undo quick so that you can see. Okay, so it looked like this, right? On the top, nothing there. Right. So I wanted to relay out to get the line that can connect to this point okay, because so I don't want to lose that. The left one, not the right Yep, so I loop and then when you, after you finish control, and then you do one by one, here we go. And you don't have to be matched, just like this, the line. The key is the line. I want it to be lined up. C can you look at my screen quick? See, it looked like this at the moment, cut. And then you just move this point, Oops. using selection tool, uh, move to move this point. Like this point, and you can snap it to that line because it won't change the shape too much. So keep going. There we go. I have more. Can you see? Like that. And then you merge them. That's all. So now it's become. Oop, I got two. Oh, one more on the bottom. There we go. So make sure you merge all the vertices. And can you look at my screen quick again? So now, same thing as this section. I don't want it to move this line. You could, in the future, you could move like this. Can you see? Yeah. You could do that too, but I just think that this is quicker. Not quicker, uh, so that you, well, let's do move if you get confused. Just move the whole thing down like that. There we go. And then you're gonna have to move the vertices right there to meet and then just apply, okay. So. <laughs> People who don't like it, you know, it's, it's hard when, well. Okay, so now when you get to this point, we're gonna have to make it full corner. So don't delete this section, just insert loop. Start it from there one here, and then you can eliminate this line. Make sure you do use delete edge command, and then you merge this section. You have to, oh, I already have merged, here we go. So that become one, and then make sure you merge, here we go. So, what time do we stop here? Oh, oh, okay, sorry. So let me record it so that you guys can try it at home. So now I cut because I want it to be a full corner. So I'm gonna 
cut like this. Here we go. Now I could see that I kind of should change direction a little bit here. You guys, can you see I make a little, not a mistake, it just, if I don't do that, I won't see it. So I'm gonna cut one more like this and I'm gonna eliminate that line. Here we go. I have to re relay out a little bit. So that one need to go. Here we go. So now I got four. Oh, this one still three corner. We're going to fix that. Can't let go. So now on this section, you just multi cut because we wanted to get four corner right there. This is four. Here we go. So now that's good. Almost, almost done, almost. So let me move this, rearrange. I want it to look a little more uniform. Here we go, press three to see how it look. So it doesn't look that bad, right? Except for this section three, we come back and fix it. So I'm gonna stop for today and then we come back. At least you get something like this. Let me do screen cap and I'm gonna put it on this wig. Then we will continue so that you can see the number of my wireframe. Let me do screen cap for you guys. Okay. So it's me. Okay guys, if you have to go, I don't mind. You can go and I gonna I, I we finished for today. Let me screen cap and pause it in project to image. So I can say, what do you call BD001? So that you can view this. This is font. I somehow I got confused. I thought we fit, uh, we done at five twelve. We started to fit 45 there, that's right. I totally forgot. Uh -oh. All right, gonna stop that.